Hey, it's four o'clock and you're watching Chelsea and Tony live. And today we're reviewing your food photos. So if you haven't already submitted them, go to sdp.io slash submit and get those to us now. This is like the best show to send your pictures to because we don't, we are not flooded with submissions like we often are. And we're very- So your picture can probably get seen. We're chronically hungry people. So we're grading on a curve where we like just about every photo. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's a good one. You should really get in on that. And Let, let's say hi to our screener, Chris, who will be fielding your questions. Yeah, we hey, have Chris. Hi, Chris. We have Chris here from Rochester, New York. He's going to be taking your questions and comments and screening through your photos. And of course we have Justin here at the battle station. I'm here. Making sure everything runs smoothly. So Kelsey yep. made us margaritas, but literally with blood, sweat, hey. and tears. <laughs> Show me your finger, Chelsea. Paper towels are my band-aids. I offered her a proper bandage. I don't like, believe no, in no, it. No, no, I don't believe in it. Um, in two weeks, well, we're skipping next week. The week after that, it will be announced. We have to put up the vote on our Patreon and let them vote on what they want the theme to be. And then we'll let you know. You can check my Instagram. So we'll be, be back in, in two weeks. Um, before we take a look at pictures, you want to, oh, let's talk about the Father's Day special. Yes, this show is sponsored by us. We're having a Father's Day sale at our store, sdp.io slash store. With the coupon code DAD30, you can get 30% off of anything in the store. And we have t-shirts and books and video series and presets. So if you're like me and you usually save it for last minute, you don't have to do that. Get your dad a gift now. Get 30% off if he's into photography, he's going to love it. We have t-shirts too. The coupon even applies to the bundles, which are already discounted. So it's like a double discount. That's like a double whammy. You get a whole bunch of stuff real cheap. I don't know that I intended to do that. <laughs> okay, well, so, get in before Chelsea ends the live show. Um, we might renege on that one. Um, news. We have some news. The Canon 7D is seven dead. Yeah, that's what they're saying. It seems like Canon has told like resellers that it's the end of the line. It's the end of the line for you, um, little buddy. At least according to Canon rumors. But now the 7D has been, it, for the longest time, it was our favorite wildlife camera because yeah. you can get them really inexpensively and Canon has some awesome lenses for wildlife. The autofocus system is awesome and it did an amazing 10 frames per second. But Canon's DSLR lineup was always so crowded. Like they had the 80D and the 77D and I nobody could distinguish which one they wanted. And so I always thought like they should just pare it down some, like they just had too many. You think they're just going to merge some cameras together? Yeah, it seems like, th because there are already rumors about a Canon 90D DSLR oh. coming out to replace the 80D. And I would bet that they would just take like the fast frames per second and good focusing and make the 90D a 7D Mark III, but with a flip screen also. Hmm. I think and, that makes sense. So yeah, because that the 7D Mark II just like did they took away the flip screen. So you, if you wanted a flip screen, but good wildlife photos, you were like torn between these two cameras. Just give us the best of both worlds, yeah, and I bet that's what they're gonna do. Okay, so it's not so sad in, after all. I made that dramatic thumbnail for nothing. <laughs> Maybe we're just wildly speculating about what's going everyone's in the wildly based speculating. On shady on a rumors rumor <laughs> on a shady. Okay, let's take a look at some food photos. Mmm, chocolate. Um, oh, that's a cookie. That's such a beautiful cookie. I the first thing my eye goes to is this this text here. Yeah. Because it's in the, the center of the photo and it's it's out of focus. Like the focus point is here. Um I will yeah, I like the vibe. I'm getting a very holiday ish vibe. Um one thing about food photos is that the color cast is very important because one thing we look at when we're deciding whether or not we would like to eat food is the color of the food, right? So we're looking at it to discern if it's rotten or if it's poisonous, just on a very like instinctual level. And right now I'm seeing this um, really warm kind of unappealing cast on the cookie. So lighting is very important with food photography. It looks nice on these chestnuts though. And I think these might be fake, which like putting in fake stuff with real food is kind of iffy but i like the general idea andrea please don't be discouraged yeah i would definitely get my focus on that chocolate ball or raise the f-stop but i did kind of like the shallow depth of field another shot with shallow depth of field here i do like that i get the sense that it's a market and it's outside with all of the lights um 
but I'm not seeing enough of the food. What's on top? Are those nuts? What's happening? I want to see more of it. And it's kind of an unflattering angle because I'm seeing that underneath flat part. What is, what is this? Yeah, oh, markets right. are so tough because the food looks so good in person. But if you're doing that, a photo, I really think you need to be looking for color and interesting shapes. And these do have interesting shapes. And the bokeh is really cool. But the color is just it's like brown, just it shades of beige. so difficult to yeah. get. Yeah, really. Alexandru. Um, um, the colors are gorgeous, right? I like the color contrast, like orange carrots, green leaves. Um, one thing that's tough about food photography is that it's a bit unnatural. They take, they have food stylists and they take things that should look like this and then they arrange them in an appealing way. Um, so I think I like the elements. I like this green on the orange, but the leaves are kind of like mushed up. There's this kind of this leaf that is not the best right here popping out. And that's a little bit off putting, though I would totally eat it. So no judgment. Um, so, yeah, I would arrange things in a, in a more attractive composition, basically. Yeah. The best tasting food isn't necessarily the best looking food. And maybe having been cooked the last would have just looked better, even if it wouldn't have tasted right. Two very funky uh, oil and vinegar things. That's kind of neat. Yeah, I think this. I think this is a good thing for Alan to focus on. Like these are good subjects, and I would take these two and treat it like a still life, and really concentrate on getting the very best lighting and background possible out of it. Because where you position the lights is going to make a huge difference. You okay, Justin? Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> This is beautiful. I like this how you had... This is gorgeous, right? So you could have had that line of the table intersecting the glass, but you made sure you got the separation. Um, and then you have this red-orange drink with the blue background, so you have the color contrast. It looks appealing. The location makes sense with the drink. This makes me want to go on vacation. Uh, I love it. Yeah, just great mood. I gave Dennis a pick. I gave Dennis a pick. This reminds me of like a farmer's market. Yeah, it's a farmer's market. Everything looks fresh and appealing. I could see them using this on their website. I might get it from an angle where you're not getting stuff under the table. Yeah, check um, the edges of the frame. Along the left side too, there's just something kind of poking in. Um, so get in there, move that stuff. Push that thing out of the left side of the frame. Move the stuff from the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, it's hard to see because your brain will tune that stuff out. Yeah. Not the greatest crop, but already you can see we're focusing on the food instead of the table. And then there's this thing on the table, so I'm just going to crop that out too. And now it's all about that. It's all about that. North Haven. Oh, that's a different state. Aaron. This is pretty beautiful. I I love the light here, but I'm... I'm struggling with the focusing point because I feel like it focused on the back of the glass and I really want it to be at the front of the glass. And if you're dealing with shallow depth of field, Aaron's at 50 millimeters and F1.8, you really have to be really conscious of it. And if you're not sure, then use a higher f-stop because you've got a nice background there. I don't think it's bad that you use a high f-stop number or a low f-stop number, but I would definitely want the focusing point here. I love the mood, though. I could see this on a restaurant's Instagram. If they said, come in and try our whiskey drink or something, I'd be like, yeah, I'm there. This looks delicious. It looks fancy. It's also kind of tough because he would want to really have focus on this the Stream. liquid, which yeah. wouldn't have existed probably. So just something to think about. You can't tell on the back of your camera. The screen's too small to see, like, this part of it is a little bit too out of focus. Ooh. Okay, I like that you made this little still life. Oh, a home chef sample platter by Jim Setzer. A home chef. This hey. is arranged beautifully. This yeah, is this amazing. Is, this is fantastic. I think the only thing I would improve about this is possibly the colors. Um, because like warmer colored food looks more appealing. Yeah, and my only other suggestion would be, like, I think it's a fantastic photo of realistic food, but I, I think there are some food. oils on the vegetables like you would for a salad, and I think it makes the leaves look a little bit limp. Oh, see, I like it. I want to eat that leaf. Oh, okay. 
Tasty Ice Cream by Jeff Wingo. Um, I, there are a lot of things right about this photo. I love the texture of the brownie. Um, what happened, Tone? I wanted to peek in the shadows and you moved the cursor at exactly the wrong moment. <laughs> because I felt weird. It seemed like it was just floating, right? And yeah. I think what happened is they, I think Jeff applied a whole lot of vignetting to it. Yeah. Maybe trying to hide some amount of detail or something. But as it is, it just seems like, whoa, there's floating ice cream. Yeah. I think, I think you did a lot right. But my thing is like ice cream is fun. And this is a very serious photo. So maybe I'd actually make it a high key photo instead of low key to match the mood. Though sometimes I eat ice cream when I'm sad. I don't know. That was just my initial feeling. <laughs> Sad ice cream. <laughs> Sad ice cream. Like yeah. You... Okay. This is gorgeous. Food beer. Okay. I'm hearing you, Alan. Yeah. That is one of the, that looks like one of those beers with like 8,000 calories. Like you can't have that end dinner. Like you're too full. Yeah, I'm but... full just looking at it. It looks like a chocolate Guinness stout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks rich. And look at the way it's pouring over the edge. It's beautiful. It's got a little bit of motion into it even. Oh, you're into this. Okay. Yeah. No, I really like this shot. You're not feeling it. Um, I might be biased. It's missing a little something to me. Hmm. It's a little plain to me. But, you know, I'm also maybe, I'm not a beer drinker, so maybe I'm missing what's going on yeah i didn't need it whoopie pie sunday with vegan strawberry soft serve by moses Farrow. now moses i know you live near us so you're gonna have to tell me where this happened okay that's the first order of business <laughs> that is gorgeous it's really wow. beautiful this looks delicious and like i was talking about that last ice cream picture being too low key but somehow this has a dark background but still feels well lit i feel like you're in a place next to a window and it doesn't look like moody to me. It just looks, I don't know. It doesn't look too dark. It looks nice. I like the lighting. I felt like I had to pull it a little, a little more to the right. Like it was a little off level or something. Yeah. Great that picture. looks good. Perfect focus. We're sp supposed to go to a, like a, that vegan restaurant with Moses. Oh, okay. Nick Vadafu. This doesn't I read as food like to me. I feel like this is happening. jam. Oh, okay. I I would look at that and be like, I don't, it doesn't look like food. I like that you improvised um, a natural background. I feel like this is homemade jam. And I like that you put the water on, on the glass container. And I think to bring this to the next level, Nick, you would put the this container in the background and then have maybe a spoonful of the jam in the foreground so I can just full on see the jam. I want to be all about the jam. You just have a spoon like right in the grass? Maybe not in the grass, maybe like on top of the thing, or maybe we just nix the grass all together and, and still get that natural vibe, but maybe put it inside. I don't okay. know. Um, very distracted by the, the geese. Yeah, because I love it and I need that towel. Is that why you're distracted? <laughs> um, I, I think Justin has done an awesome job of kind of creating an Instagram scene from a sandwich. But what could he do different? I, maybe if it was cropped a little tighter. I, I like it a lot. I love the color contrast of the plate with the strawberries. I get this very simple homemade feel um, and the towel adds to that. I, I like it. Yeah, I, you're going I'm, back. I'm sorry, I'm going back. Um, Chris, what do you think we could do different? What if the what if it were more like an open face sandwich and the the bread were moved to the side a little bit so we could see some of the lettuce and tomatoes? Or what if we had like some droplets on the strawberries? Do you have any suggestions, Chris? Yeah, the the uh, great way to get shine on food is a mixture of water and glycerin instead of just oil that way it sits on the surface mm. and that almost looks like a wonder bread which is by its nature is not really all that interesting yeah that's a, a so, great point uh, maybe a, a real textured bread and a three-quarter view so you can actually see some of the contents right now you've got a piece of a, a, a picture of a piece of wonder bread you know i love your idea about a, a more grainy bread because mm -hmm. that would also add to this whole homemade natural vibe that Justin has going on. 
What's the word Henry taught us about bread with the big holes in it? Like crumb? crumb. Yeah, get a bread with a good crumb in there. Okay, good. Crummy bread. Arthur, what's happening? This is an interesting picture. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of absorbing the whole scene because I've never seen anything quite like this. Is it like... It looks kind of like cafeteria food, but delicious. Because, like, the mashed potatoes are scooped from an ice cream scoop, but then they have butter and gravy on them. Justin, you're right. I'm so hungry. Justin told me to eat. <laughs> Justin warned me. Justin said, eat before the show. And I didn't listen to him. Yeah, I'm going to just straighten it out a little bit. Like, I I have this philosophy where if you want to tilt on it, either you go deliberate with the tilt and make it a lot, or you just make it completely level. But it bugs me when something's like one degree off. I got to say, I don't fully know what's going on, but it's interesting, and I, I kind of like it. Yeah, it definitely caught my eye and made me think about it. Good shot. This is a lighting problem, because you're getting, I'm guessing you're in a place possibly with fluorescent lighting, because the colors are kind of green and unnatural, and you can't do that with food photography. I'm telling you, it's like skin tones. We're so in tune with which colors food should be. And we also identify foods by their color. Um, so you have to be really careful about that. Um, I would also crank up that F-stop number. I mean, I can tell this is not something that you planned out, but it's like, this food is really beautiful and I want to get a good shot of it. And I think you did good. But when in doubt, like use multiple F-stop numbers. And like I said, when you look at the back of the screen, you can't always see just how shallow the depth of field is because the screen's small. Now, I make this, Charles, so I know this is a homemade crayon sauce. But if you would put a few full uncooked cranberries on top, then you would clue in other people to what they're looking at. And I think I'd go with a, a like a deeper depth of field or something. Uh, is that camera shake? What am I looking at? ISO 2500, 40 millimeters, 1 one hundredth. Yeah, it seems to have like a twist to it, right? Maybe he stirred the crayon. N or, no, it's not in a pot. It's garnished. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you got a lot going right. The garnish is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. It just got that, I think it's camera shake. Yeah, which doesn't make sense because it's that one one hundredth. I would have. Well, he might be like me. I wonder if it was like a Helios lens or something. It's just the standard kit lens. I definitely thought about that. Like some lenses will have, oh, maybe it's just really low resolution. Oh, oh cause you can see this part looks normal right yeah. here. Okay. Okay. But the strawberry. Adam Anderson, the strawberry. That looks very difficult. It's not. So one, what you want to do is so put something in the glass and focus on it and then switch the camera to manual focus because I think what happened here is you tried to focus on something and maybe it focused on the back of the glass or the front of the glass. And as a result, I think it's just out of focus. You should be okay at one one thousandth of a second. Let me see if the droplets are. There's some motion in the droplets. So you might even need Fast. a higher shutter speed. Maybe it is just um, motion blur. And you're at ISO 1600, so this is the time. You can get an inexpensive flash with high-speed shutter, like HSS. You actually, I have a video called Three Photography Projects where I do water droplets, water droplet photos, and a lot of that is going to apply to this because you need a fast shutter speed, mm -hmm. and then I used a, a flash, and I talk about my settings. So, yeah, check that out. But still, good idea. Good color contrast with the black background i want that by a mirror yeah i do two mirror yeah those that looks pretty ones? delicious it looks really good interesting processing um is it too warm too brown would you know it kind of i mean I think johnson a mirror is being intentionally flat yeah and low contrast with it which i i understand because it's kind of it's kind of like kind of a farm farmy mood to it Whoa. Whoa. Magical Oreos. <laughs> so this is about to be really cool. Like, I think it's going to splash in there and do cool things. But as it is, it looks like the Oreo is just magically suspended. You want the splash, too. I, or some motion or some explanation, because it feels 
weird and surreal, right? I mean, maybe that <laughs> is what you were trying to do, but it, maybe it just feels surreal. It could be a statement. Oreos are magical. I like it. It's interesting, but I think a splash could be cool, too. I'll say if the milk had been in a little, like, a decanter or one of those milk containers. Oh, instead of the... Oh, yeah. the, the cardboard. Yeah, you, because there's words, and it kind of takes away from it. Uh, lemon meringue. Nice. Remember that time you ate a sea urchin at a sushi restaurant and you, you hated it? Well, I think it was bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. If you've only had it one time. I only had it one time, but I'm I'm fairly sure it was rotten. And you did the thing where you, you had a bite and you were like, oh, that's, oh, I think that's rotten. Here, try this. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> you did not sell me on that. My face did the so thing. You know when something tastes so bad, you try to chew without having it touch anything in your mouth. You're like, blah, 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 blah. and then, <laughs> yeah, that was scary for me. Okay. This is the same color issue that I've talked about with another, um, other photos where this is like indoor lighting and it's just meringue is supposed to be bright white. Like that's part of what's so beautiful about meringue. So you have to be careful. Yeah, it really is beautiful though. It's meringue a is beautiful. Great subject. I might even like push in tighter. Yeah. Wow. Gorgeous. Open face smoked salmon. This is an open face sandwich, like you were talking about, Tony. Yeah, though I would almost want to see a little more of the bread, but it's wow. You can't be pleased, sir. <laughs> no, I, look at the shape that they did with the garnish. Yeah, exactly. The it is. I'm giving a pick. Artistic. They did a fantastic job, and it's totally worthy of a pick. It's worthy. It's it's like portrait photography is mostly about the styling and the posing, and food photography is mostly about the food styling. It it really is. I really like that they have, Hands. they're interacting with it, right? Mm -hmm. It helps to tell a little bit more of a story. And I don't know that I've seen, like overhead shots are common with food, but overhead shots where people are also interacting, I don't see a lot. Um, the hands in the upper right, I wish they weren't kind of just barely poking in. Like I wish they were more in the middle of the frame because it's weird when they're just kind of poking in. But otherwise, I think it's a fantastic complete story i just lowered the exposure a little bit because you can see the hand was blown out i love that i'm giving you a pick as well good shot cat um let me ask you chris do you have any questions or comments are people just psyched out of their minds about the father's day sale <laughs> people are enjoying the uh the food photos and everybody's hungry so yeah well, this, hungry definitely definitely time hungry. For this one <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you think, um, let's see, where's a good one here? What's the best style or setup for recipe book photos? Like to do continual shots, would you just do it freehand or mount something like ceiling mounted or how would you, what kind of setup would you use? I would keep it consistent um, because every book has its own style. So it should match the style of the book. So if your book is like organic recipes, lunch recipes, then the organic word would mean you want your photos to look very natural and of that style and then keep with that style. Um, and if your book was about gastro fusion or something, you might want it to look more modern and stark. So I don't have any just blanket advice for that. And full disclosure, I'm, I don't do food photography full time as a photographer, but that's what I've seen. I've studied it a little bit and that's what I've seen. And I would say invest in lighting. Yeah, lighting because is so important. Because lighting is going to be, you want it to be consistent. And you don't want just overhead lights. You probably want like one big soft box. And you want it to be consistent from shot to shot. And if you're relying on natural light in any way, as you're making the recipe book, the sun's going to be rising and setting. You're going to have cloudy days, rainy days, sunny days. The lighting won't be controlled unless you mount a flash to it. So only rely on artificial You're taking a hard stance. Yeah, it's going to be important. What else, Chris? Mm -mm. Chris yeah, Chris. another one. What is your favorite piece of gear besides your camera? What's the next most important thing besides your camera and lenses? Besides a camera and lens? Hmm. I mean, can I say yeah. smartphone? <laughs> because things like getting directions, planning things out, taking notes... I'll even take test shots with my smartphone. Yeah. So, yeah, 
That's a good one. Um, I really like my Wacom tablet too. For me, a good bag and camera strap are really important. And right now I've been using the Peak Design bag with a little clip on it. And I know you hate it, <laughs> but I really like having my camera accessible so I can quickly Please grab it. Please stop hitting me in the head with it. That's all I ask. Then there will be no mm, judgment. I'm not making any promises. <laughs> I get so mad every time you do it. It's unfair. This looks like a good scene, Ronnie. Um, yes, but I think the most important part is the lime that's in the corona here, and we need some more subject separation. Um, this is a good time to use a shallower depth of field because you're at F22, but as a result, the trees in the background here are really, really in focus, and they're really competing. It I'm seeing a lot like of table. Color cast here. Yeah. A lot of table. I'm okay with the table because at least You're it's not. not so distracting. Like there's no detail in it. We'll expose for the subject too, but we can't. And it's a little green, right? Okay. We did what we could. My lunch today, dang, John, your lunch is amazing. Your lunch kicked my lunch's butt. Yeah. Um, John is good at making burgers. Yes. You ever but... go to a barbecue and somebody like just makes a burger and then they give you like two pieces of bread from a loaf from like, you know, like <laughs> Wonder Bread or something? No. Yes, no that happens ever... all the no time. No one would ever do that to me. John knows. He's got vegetables on there. He's probably got condiments. He's got cheese and bacon. Like I grew up in Texas where people know how to barbecue. And then you come to New England and they think like making hamburgers on the barbecue is just like, here's meat, here's bread, be happy. <laughs> Tony? That's all our forefathers gave us. We didn't see fit to put Tony, any more effort into barbecue. You don't even know. My grandfather made his own sausage to make a sausage burger. Okay, well, that's not, did, but did he have condiments said, mm, at least? Yeah, he had condiments, and it was spicy as heck. And you know what? I love John's burger. I see a salad in the back and some beans in the front, but too much HDR for a burger. You can't be HDRing a burger, John. Well, I'll bet you a million bucks John ain't in New England because this is not a New England barbecue. This is a Southern barbecue. Anyway, <laughs> it looks wonderful. Chelsea's right, too much HDR. Yeah, the processing is too much. It looks gritty. I don't want a gritty burger. I want a fresh, clean burger. With nothing on it. Just plain. Tony? <laughs> You're cruising for a bruise on Tony. <laughs> Orange cake. Ooh, that sounds good, Don. I like um, the icing. You know, I like that I can see the texture. The tablecloth is very distracting, and so is the plate. Do you know they've even done studies on plates, and people just prefer to eat off of a white plate? Yeah, there are food studies about that stuff because people want to make money in the restaurant industry. So they do this. White plates are good. Simple, clean plates. You know, you don't want too many distractions from your food. Wow. This is such a gorgeous still life. Yeah. I love this. I'm just giving it a pick right Let's away. Let's just give it a pick and just move on. You did it right. The lighting looks great. There's enough detail. The background is not distracting. But... Wait, it's like, what's going on with the liquid here in the glass? Like the glass is laying on its side, right? Or maybe that's the glass itself. Maybe it's reflecting. Yeah, I guess. It, whatever. Ignore that. It was. It's magic. <laughs> my first impression is what counts, and I really liked it. I don't. If that's is that sugar cane or something? It doesn't register as food to me. Is this cinnamon? I'm sorry, Payman, we don't know sure. <laughs> what this is. So it's probably it's that we're dumb Americans. Oh my gosh, I relate so much to this one. <laughs> Let's go to this one first. Um, I would add a little more depth of field because I'm seeing like this block broccoli rob looks really nice. Um, uh, I'd like to see a little bit more. We've got this clean plate in background. I feel like this is more upscale. Um I don't know if this is your food or you did a shoot, but if you're shooting for a restaurant, you have to make sure that their plating is perfection. And I'm seeing a bunch of like spare juice and stuff. Yeah. So they can just take a napkin and even just wipe up the plate. So it's nice and clean, but really nice and good, good colors, good natural colors. 
Of course I love this, Jeff. <laughs> Who hasn't looked at their drumstick like that? Very cute. Now this, I know I was talking about the white plate, but this has a very, like, Thanksgiving vibe. I feel like I want to go to this family dinner. It, you know, looks great. What do you think? Um, yeah, it's it's great. The the lighting is a little bit awkward, and I think it's a flash or something, but yeah. like we have these kind of deep shadows here. Bounce flash would be a good choice there. Raymond. Um, love, love this. The color's crazy, though, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, I love candy. This also has a very interesting processing, which took my attention away from these tomatoes. Now, these look like tomatoes in the Matrix, and I don't think that that's a bad thing, but it doesn't really look like natural food photography. This could be a good stock photo for, like, GMOs, because everyone thinks they're all, like, spooky and scientific. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All right, we'll look at this photo, and then we have some chit-chat. We do? Yeah, I made some. Um, why? I don't understand why this looks like it's out of focus. Maybe the focal point is just up here, because this looks like it's in focus, but that's out of focus. I don't know what happened, but maybe a little more depth of field. And then things like checking checking the edges of the frame. Like we have this over here and we have this wine glass kind of poking in. So always check the edges of your frame. That looks good though. Let's do some chit chat. Mantis shrimp called you a discount Anderson Cooper. I think you're the designer Anderson Cooper and he's the discount. He's the dollar store version. Thanks, Chelsea. Are you okay? Are you going to read it? or? I was just wondering if I even bother with this. <laughs> I guess I wanted to express that so many people don't actually watch the videos and then they comment on it. And sometimes you'll even call them out. You'll be like, you didn't watch the videos. Me? I just put a whole disclaimer. I pinned my comment. Watch the video before you come at me. You're making me crazy. I just turned off the notific <laughs> all notifications for YouTube, Justin, on my phone. I was like, F this if you're not gonna watch the first minute i'm out jamal peoples it's like this guy doesn't listen ken ceo said two years ago he said he knew that sales would fall by half year over year maybe he can't photography work and needs the views by the way i watch 15 seconds and then change so the usage rate goes down jamal you're a bad person yeah, for doing that yeah. that's so rude <laughs> Because you watched 15 seconds and stopped watching, you admit, which means you didn't watch the video, but judge us. Come on. That's ridiculous. I also know people watch our videos and dislike it because as soon as we post a video, we always get like- They subscribe just It's like the dislike. same five people who We know it's it. you. And it'll be, it'll be 20 seconds after I post the video. It's not like they got into it and determined that they weren't happy with the content. At least it gives me perspective. If I'm ever watching YouTube, which I always am, and I don't like something, I'm just like, I don't need to voice my opinion. I will just move on and be better for it. Here is a still frame from Canon's marketing material on their new SL3 DSLR. I think it's the, um, that looks like something different. Anyway, it's some Canon ad. Why is it so creepy? Why is it so creepy? Can you imagine? Like, it takes a committee of people to develop marketing material like this. And... They actually filmed the video demonstrating the touchscreen where the photographer is photographing a sleeping woman. <laughs> That's so weird. It's so weird. Is the premise that it's... There is it's... no context to it. It's not like they have a deep relationship and we establish this in the video and they get married and it's their honeymoon and she falls asleep from such a busy day and then he wants to capture the sweet moment. She's sleeping and he just pops out a camera and photographs her. We have no additional context to it. It just weirded me out so much. It's real weird. Can you imagine being the model on that shoot? You're like, just sleep. Yeah. Just like can just identify their target audiences, including mm, people who want to photograph sleeping women. And then because we were short in chit chat, I just included this picture of me from 2001 so people could see that. I used to have dark hair and and extremely high pants. Yeah, and, and short sleeves. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't cool at the time. It's not like <laughs> well, that's what people were wearing, and you can see from the other people they look way more normal than me. That's just how awkward I am. <laughs> how are your pants somehow too high and too short? <laughs> oh, Tony, but you did win sexiest geek, and and maybe if you had had appropriate pants, that wouldn't have happened. 
Yeah, that's my secret. I'm not threatening to anybody. He's all yours, Chels. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's mine. I wouldn't have him any other way. Sorry you guys had to see that. You're not. We all have those pictures. Look, I'm laughing at him, but my pictures will never see the light. <laughs> they have been burned. I am confused about the scale of this. Are these beautiful tiny cakes or massive, massive plates? I thought it was a tile floor at first, and I was very disturbed. Well. <clears throat> but I think it's a, a cool shot. I might even just um, crop a little bit just so that we get to see this one more, and we can just assume it goes on forever. Yeah, and I think I'd go for in infinite depth. Of what do you think like, this is, no need by the way? Background. Like a cucumber slice with like a savory jello with caviar? I think they are the fanciest jello shots. Like jello shots from a five like star Like a pickle? Restaurant. Oh, it's a pickleback jello shot. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give this a The pick. most That's expensive beautiful. way to get hammered. <laughs> <sighs> oh, These look no. like some Dang. Dang. There's like better. gourmet street tacos Shoot. that you can get. Mm. Shoot. <laughs> You yeah. just ruined my night. Yeah, These look the delicious. Nice yeah, let's get rid of this stuff in the background. Yeah, we're just going to balance it out a little bit. But the presentation here is just so perfect. Like, I wouldn't oh be surprised gosh. if this food was made for the photo shoot because the lettuce is nice and crisp. Oh, that looks good. Um, it's challenging, though. Like, I I might go for a little more depth of field. Like, you're at F4 or 5, maybe like F8. We need to move on. I'm, I feel sad. Take him with the iPhone. You guys are the best. Thank you, Sophie. What did you get, Sophie? I am impressed and jealous. No. Can I officially protest? First of all, it's got two tops on the bun. And who does that? It's got two tops. You got sesame seeds on both sides. How are you going to eat that? With my face. Your jaw is not yes. unhinged it like unhinges. a boa constrictor. Yeah. No, that's impossible. That's got like eight inches and it doesn't have the bread on top. Looks like a design competition or something. I think it's beautiful. And, you know, the background is a little distracting. And I'd say, Tony, if I had to eat this burger, I would just cut it in half and just figure it out. Like, I'm a survivor, you know? It is beautiful. I'll say bust out that portrait mode if your iPhone has it. Because mm -hmm. portrait mode isn't just Sorry. for people. It will work on food, and it helps a lot in those, like, cluttered restaurant locations. Wow. My Ooh, rant was beautiful. not about... Not about picture, her photo so. at all. You're just, just angry about burgers. I've gotten too many burgers that I can't fit in my mouth, and I want people to do something about it. Make reasonably sized burgers. I don't need the bread to be three inches thick. Are you okay? I need to get my mouth around it. You okay? I want to eat the burger. We got to talk to you, Justin. Are we going to have to have a burger <laughs> intervention for Tony? <laughs> we may. This is beautiful. I love the natural look. I love the contrast. The depth of field is appropriate. I'm giving you a pick. Mm. Go higher with the depth of field. I would actually think, I think that it's a little cool. But you're cool. And if you want that cool look on the background, you can just go into the shadows and then make those cool. And then you won't impact the highlights and the lights. And that's how you do that. But nice work on the lighting. You really showed off the shape of the seeds. I like this except for this hat. I don't want a hat on the table. Is yeah, and I would just space the objects a little more. What do you think this evenly. is? Yeah, that's a yeah. baseball hat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want that. But I like this part. Yeah. It's a still life, so treat the arrangement really carefully. We've had times when I was trying to get a picture of my food and like the waitress was trying to put something down and she just has to stand there for a minute while I'm like um, that's rude. shuffling stuff around. So well, the we, picture's more important. We also had that time where we went to take a picture and they were like, wait. Let me do something. And they went and fixed the food to make it more presentable. Yeah, when she saw me pull my phone out, she's like, we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> went back to the kitchen. <laughs> Martin, she did. I was like, and it was my food too. So I was like, do I get a say in this? I was very much looking forward to eating right now. <laughs> okay, I think this is a muffin. I would just kind of make the depth of field a little deeper so I could see more about that muffin. Is that a chocolate chip? We don't know. A blueberry? 
I think people get thrown off with the f-stops because maybe they're not used to shooting as close, so they get really close, and depth of field just disappears when you start to get close to your subject. Mm -hmm. uh, Jars of urine. <laughs> the guy in the right is the healthy Hydrated. one. <laughs> I <laughs> would either center it perfectly or go completely off center, but it feels a little weird to me that we're just like just a little bit not centered. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that I'm going to get there without making it a weird crop. I feel so bad. That is such a beautiful picture, but all I can think of is that it'd be a chart in a doctor's office. I'd be like, are you here or here? Because you need to hydrate. It's like Bear Grylls cocktail hour. <laughs> Tony, solid one. Now this burger, Tony, can you handle this one? Yeah, that seems like the appropriate thickness. But like I established earlier, it needs condiments. It needs vegetables on it. Lettuce, tomatoes, some onions, some pickles. Are you a burger snob? Yeah, I'm a burger snob. I'm proud of it. What's your favorite burger restaurant? Oh, it's the, the engine, engine room. room. Yeah. Okay. Not, not a point of reference that anybody's going to get. I but like if it's fast food, Five Guys makes a mean one because they will put like over 40 different things on your burger. <laughs> they'll have like two types. They'll have grilled jalapenos and... Pickled jalapenos and four lettuces and. Are you okay? Luke, this pepper. looks like a great night. Just some wine and a burger and a bag and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I like the vibe. I actually like this story. Like he left the screw top from the wine in there. Yeah. There you go, Tony. Yeah. So many burgers and now I'm afraid for the burgers of what you're gonna say. No, this is a pretty good looking burger and those fries look appropriately salty. Like I'm you getting, can see the salt. I'm getting a little green tint on the fries, so I'm going to just warm them up. Look, when you... All right, these right, don't these look cold physically? And when you warm it up, to, like, color-wise, they also look warmer temperature-wise. And that's something you should know with food photography. But, Angelo, you got your girl over there also taking a picture of the food. She's here too. She's in the picture. They so they both love this. Burger. She's gotta be like smiling and giving the thumbs up. Yeah, like burger time. <laughs> okay, Muhammad, this looks delicious. What yeah, is what that? does it need? Like maybe more dramatic lighting, like some side lighting or something. It looks good, like a street market shot. Man, those markets—they have really difficult lighting. This shot's beautiful. I'm gonna mm -hmm. give this one a pick. Nice, simple composition. No distractions. Oh, blueberry snob! Colors. How am I supposed to eat those blueberries? Well, fisherman's friend. I don't know what that means. Stuart, what am I? What's? Isn't that like Chris a looks cough confused, drop too. or something like that? Is this a candy? One of those? What would be a? F I, is it some sort of? Bait? It's a molasses cookie. Just oh. straight up molasses. Looks it. How, how is that a fisherman's friend, though? <laughs> no idea. I think a fisherman's friend would have lime in it so they don't get scurvy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, they are a cough drop, but it doesn't look like a cough drop, though. You, you blew our mind, Stuart. I'm um, sorry. We got to so Anyway, high ref stop. Oh, my gosh. This is the first one that just straight up made my mouth water. Yeah. This is beautiful. The garnish on top was really good because otherwise it'd just be like a pile of reddish brown mm -hmm. and you put that garnish and i'm like what these are fresh and the sesame seeds as well you added some texture and some color and i get a sense for the flavor and the lighting is perfect it's big soft box or big soft source off from the right that's showing the shiny texture and still adding depth and stuff good yeah. job the lighting here could be so much better. Like, it's very flat right now. This food looks good. The plating's good. Your composition's good. The color's so flat. Like, it looks like, it looks a little depressing. So we're going to up the exposure so it's bright and cheery. Bring up the whites. Look at that. It's already like, wow, I'm having a good time. And think about it like a still life. Think about the use of space. Because the top part of the frame has nothing going on, and the bottom of the part of the frame has a lot. So arrange that teapot. You don't need to show the whole teapot to convey that you're also having tea. Watch that fork that's kind of jutting into the corner of the frame. But it looks good. Yeah. Good job, Brent. Dum-dums are good. Yeah. I like that mystery flavor. 
I was spending all my time pondering if it would be better with all the wrappers off, but they probably just want to eat their dum dums later. <gasps> what the hell? What is that? I it's the most like artistic dessert I've ever seen in my life. That is a work of art. It's a scoop of something in a sugar dome. I mean, great picture, color, color contrast, good lighting. Maybe you could. Maybe we could get a like a little closer so I could see the texture on the ice cream or something. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Like, I think we but, could do wow. something a little more interesting with the lighting. Wow. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. There's more to it, but I don't really see food. Yeah. There. I, I don't. I know see a glimpse of something possibly food. What is? Are these beets? Oh yeah, those are beets. Love me some beets. What is this? Fish? Okay. Well, for the ad. Okay, so that's good because that's important context. Because picture that's for your Instagram is different than something that is for an ad. If this is for an ad, what could they do to make this a little more effective? Well, I think you need to bring up the beets so that we, we know what they are. <laughs> But then the, the rest of the picture is blown out. So I can't just do that h here easily. I just want a DJ to sample you saying, bring up the beats bring and up like the beats. mix it into some EDM. <laughs> um, wow, it's nice and clean, the composition. I feel like you're, it's like about a well-balanced meal or something. It looks very healthy and homemade. Um, the dill gives away that this is fish. Is that salmon? If this is salmon, then you might want to show a more colorful cut of fish. Yeah, and I would almost, I mean, unless it's for a restaurant and their tables are all white like this, in which case you have to do that for realism, I would, you know, something with a little more texture to it, like just, you know, wide plank wood or something might be a little more interesting. Wow, Pixel agrees. <laughs> I will say, though, the picture is good. It's just the food styling could use a little bit of work. Wow. Don't come to our house. You're going to have a whole lot of poodle on you, okay? Edward Brown, this pizza looks great. I like the fresh basil on top so it doesn't just look, you know, all mush. Yeah, I'm going to give this one a pick. This is one of the best pictures we've seen tonight. I love the styling on it. Wow, they really get Our house that. is very safe, so don't think about coming here. Because... <laughs> <laughs> the lighting is a little... Gosh, they're so wild. Those dumplings look good, but the lighting is not quite right. The colors are weird. Is this oh, like panna, this panna is gorgeous. bread? Yeah, this is great. I'm going to give you a pick right That's away. That's like a Christmas um, bread, and then there's a Christmas vibe to it. You have the walnuts, which are a part of the bread. I like when people put the ingredients next to the food so you know what's in it. They're never going to stop, are they? <laughs> I just see Tony run. Swordfish steak. I like to see a little more of the fish. But I don't know, I like the I like the color contrast with the blue and the orange and brown, but I would like to see more of, you know, the fish. I think you were going for those two streaks on the plate. It looks good. Do you like swordfish, Chelsea? I like all fish. I'm a fish lover, Justin. How about you? I'm with you, Chelsea. You're with me? You like seafood? Yeah. Me too. Yeah, so? Fresh, 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 fresh seafood. Me too. Tony's a Texas boy, so he's he's not too into the seafood. You give him a cow and he's happy. I give him a cow. Well, no, actually, he doesn't like cuts of meat. He likes Tex-Mex. Really? Yeah. Um, so, Rudy, this is, like, similar to what we're seeing with some of the other photos where the light is just not right. There are some distractions in the background here. Um, I like that you can see the person preparing the food, but I think that the biggest issue is is that the lighting is not very good. Looks like some homemade chicken soup. And again, there is camera shake. You're at one fifteenth of a second. Oh, but you're at four millimeter. What is happening? Oh, Samsung Galaxy. Okay. What is happening then? Did you just, maybe you cropped a lot? Um, I heard you outing me as a Texan who doesn't eat steak. <laughs> and I only, in like the last... A couple of weeks, Sorry. did I really understand why that was? Because growing up, like, everybody ate steak and stuff. Here's the thing. 
my dad would only eat meat well done. Oh. Like charred. But you don't probably. even get good steak now. Yeah, probably not. But the I best never developed a too. taste for it. Yeah. You don't have to develop a taste. It's a cow. It tastes delicious. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. Like I didn't grow up eating seafood, and as a result, I didn't develop the love that you have for seafood. And I I will now enjoy a good steak. But you're right, I don't have that like Oh, I remember this from my childhood. This is like a food that I've savored my whole life kind of thing. Steaks were kind of ruined for me. Okay. Do you think that's what that is? Yeah, it's my dad's fault for all of his well-done meat. <laughs> Who eats steaks well done? My dad, that's who. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I swear, like, the quality of steaks has gotten better since we were kids and stuff, too. Uh, that seems, that could be. You, I mean, we definitely also got whatever was the cheapest cut of meat yeah, at the yeah. Safeway. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do steaks often, but I'll want a good one if I get one. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. Um, you want to take another question and then get out of here? Sure. Why? You want to go grab some food? Yeah, I'm starving now. <laughs> What's up, Chris? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, there's a question here about uh, any tips or tricks for making food, you know, the food substitutes like motor oil instead of syrup, glycerin and water to put shine on things. Have you guys got any secrets like that? I would toss it back to you, Chris. It sounds like you yeah, know the answers. I mean, I've read articles on it, you know, but I don't, I haven't actually done it myself. I will say making it actually inedible works. Like if you're propping things up with toothpicks Absolutely. and if you're not, if you're not constructing it, let's say you have a burger, you're not supposed to construct it the way that you'd want to eat it. You're pushing the ingredients to the front and kind of like painting the ketchup on. We did a we did a burger photo shoot in one of our videos. So you're preparing the food to take a picture, not to eat it. And so it's more about the styling. But what tricks do you know, Chris? Motor oil? A couple of them, yeah. I use motor oil instead of uh, pancake syrup. And mm. it just stays there and it doesn't soak in. Oh. Uh, another one is uh, mashed potatoes instead of ice cream because it doesn't melt. Yeah, I'd heard that mm. one. And cardboard slices to in between the condiments on a burger so that it spreads it all out and it doesn't collapse on itself so it makes it look thicker. Things oh. like that. It's, uh, there's all kinds of great videos on it and there's some good, really good channels on uh, food photography that will show you a lot of the tips. Really neat stuff. Yeah, I, it's fun to watch those videos. I've watched a few. Oh, that person put toothpicks. Yeah, that's what I was yep. just and, spotting. And it looks so, I mean, you could edit out the toothpick, but it looks so much better. You get that thickness of the burger so it's not all squashed in. Um, that does look really good. That's, you know what? America's the best country, but Europe knows they figured out you put on an egg over easy on your burgers and it's way better. And I don't know why Americans American, don't figure that but out. But they call it an American burger. Yeah, but they stick the egg on it. They're still giving us credit. I appreciate that. But, but we don't do that. But nobody does that here. <laughs> Except for me. I love an egg on my burger. And fat burger. Fat burger? Oh, yeah. Fat yeah, burger yeah. will do it. Mm, I don't even know what fat burger is, but sign me up. <laughs> yeah, we've been to fat burger out in California. Remember? We did? Yeah. Before we met with your, uh, the friend with the neon photography, Matt. Matt oh, well. you're right. You're right. That was right. Fat Burger. But who puts cucumbers on a burger? Do you agree with that? I think not? he. I think he did it for the picture, and maybe he it thought it look looked good. better than a pickle. Yeah, Adrian, you, you get a pick. I'm All right. Unsure about the cucumber. <laughs> I'll let it slide this time. Okay, you want to get out of here? Yes. I'm going to end on this picture because it says that is all. That is all. Thank you guys for joining us. We're going to pick the next theme that's going to happen in two weeks. And again, we have our Father's Day sale. So if you want to be ahead of the curve and get that shopping over with, you can get t-shirts or books or videos or presets, all sorts of training, and get it 30% off with the coupon DAD30 at our store, sdp.io slash store. So thanks for your support. And I hope you find something that you like there. They, we have good t-shirts too. Very soft. Um, thank you, Chris, for helping us out and for reading us the comments. And thank you, Justin, for manning the battle station. See sure. you all in two weeks. Thanks. Bye. See ya. We did it. That is all. Thanks, Chris. Stopped bleeding, too. <laughs> 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 <laughs>